Okay, what's up everybody? Pastor Matt here. Thanks for checking into my YouTube channel. Today we're going to tackle the question, can you self-educate your way through seminary? Or to ask the question another way, can you homeschool yourself through seminary? Well, thanks for checking into my YouTube channel. My name is Matt. I'm the pastor of Gospel Fellowship PCA. We are a Reformed church just north of Pittsburgh. If you're looking for a Bible-believing church from the Reformed tradition, Gospel Fellowship PCA, Come visit us this coming Lord's Day. Well, I got this question about self-education from a friend in Nigeria. And it really got me to thinking about the possibilities of how, how realistic is it that a man can self-educate himself. And of course, there are a dozen or so reasons why a person might feel they need to do this. Uh, many people who want to go into the ministry will tell you they're too busy to go to seminary. Uh, they'll tell you that uh, the location is way too far away from where they live in order to go to seminary realistically, at least in an actual on-campus sort of a setting. Many will uh, suggest that they don't have a bachelor's degree, and of course seminary is technically a graduate education for those who already have a bachelor's degree. Uh, seminary is usually a master's degree, and so some people wouldn't qualify by that definition. Uh, other people are tent makers, they have other jobs, uh, maybe they're supporting their family through you know, what we call tent making, which is bivocational ministry in a completely different field besides pastoral leadership. Or in the case of this friend who emailed me the question, uh, they're in a nation where seminary is impossible. So before we answer the question of how would we go about self-educating, the first thing I want to do is just give a little bit of pushback and say, are you sure you can't go? Because for the most part, seminary actually is, at least in my view, uh, one of the best ways to get an education. And that's probably because of uh, the old problem that you don't know what you don't know. So how can you teach yourself what you don't already know? There's entire fields of knowledge. There's all kinds of concepts and ideas and even ways to study that you don't know. And uh, you don't know what you don't know, so it's, it's difficult to self-educate yourself in a lot of ways. And so I guess I would say, you know, are you really sure you can't go? Today, there are so many different virtual campuses, virtual programs, online uh, learning possibilities. It would seem difficult to truly say that it's impossible. Even if you don't have the time, uh, some of the costs are greatly reduced. And even when we begin to talk about money, please keep in mind that there are some free seminary educations. Now, I don't know uh, a lot about some of these places, but I know at least one called MINTS, and that's an acronym for something, but it's a free seminary education designed prim primarily for people in the third world uh, who are maybe on the mission field and can't get education that way. But I will say that practically every recognized accredited seminary has some sort of virtual online learning programs, most of which are fully accredited, and many of them are very, very, very affordable. So. Um, I, but but the point of this bit, video is not to debate that. I'm just going to assume that you're right in saying that you can't do self or you can't do traditional seminary education. So your only option is self education. Well, how would you do that then? Well, um, let me say a couple of things to those of you who are trying to self educate. Now, the first thing I would say is I have seen it done fairly well. There's a friend of mine on the internet. His name is Tyler Jackson. Uh, he doesn't know I'm going to say his name on <laughs> online today, so I hope I don't offend you. Uh, but he has a master's degree in a different field, if I'm not mistaken, uh, but, but not a master of divinity. And he is one of the best self-educators I think I've ever seen, uh, just based on what he puts out there online from what he's studying and he's reading, constantly working through some of the great works of systematic theology, uh, reading Gerhardus Voss and John Calvin and the Confessions of the Faith, studying Westminster, even teaching himself the biblical languages of Greek and Hebrew. I would say, hey man, here's a guy who's, who's actually doing it. And he often reaches out for advice on books or other ideas. And so I know that it can be done, and again, my point in this video is not to not to argue for traditional seminary, but simply to say how would it be done if you were going if you were going to go that direction. So the the first piece of concrete uh, advice I would give is that you would have to immerse yourself in heavy, heavy, heavy doses 
of Bible reading. I just don't see any other way about it. If you feel called to the ministry, uh, you think you have something to say from the pulpit, you feel some desire to preach the Word of God, you had better know the Word of God. You, and you better know it backwards and forwards. You better know it even better than a person who's going to go to a traditional seminary because they're going to get pushed, pushed, pushed hard. And a lot of their classes, New Testament classes, Old Testament survey classes, classes on individual books of the Bible, uh, they're going to get pushed really hard. And so you're going to have to really, really do yourself a ton of favors in advance if you're going to educate yourself and know your Bible backwards and forwards. Now, I would suggest, and this is going to sound like a lot, but if you're going to try to self-educate, you should probably be reading the whole Bible through somewhere between two to five times every single year. Okay, Two to five times the whole Bible. You say, whoa, that's too much. Well, wait a second. Hold on. Uh, if you're going to skip a seminary education, you better supplement that with just massive doses of Bible reading and note-taking. I'm not going to talk too much about note-taking in this video because I mentioned it in so many other of my videos, but I just don't see any other way around the fact that you would know your Bible practically backwards and forwards. So one of the things that you should probably do is get involved in one of those really high dose Bible reading plans. There's one out there called Professor Horton's Bible reading plan. It takes you through the Bible multiple times every year, but there's just no way you could skip heavy, heavy doses of biblical knowledge such that you practically know every every page, every section, where it is on the Bible, what its contact context is, who the author is, what the situation is. There's just no other way than doing heavy, heavy doses of Bible reading. Second piece of advice I would say is you're going to have to have a mentor. And this is going to be absolutely non-negligible. I will not quibble with you on this one. You're going to have to have a real in-person mentor, an actual person that you know, not just an internet friend, not just a YouTube guru, an actual real mentor. And that person is going to have to have some ministry or pastoral experience to help guide you. Now, why do you need an in-person mentor? Well, because we all have blind spots in our lives. There are things about ourselves, our personalities, our leadership traits, our preaching abilities that are uh, weak areas. There are defects in our character, and we need somebody else to help point those out to us. And so having a true friend who's experienced in the ministry that can serve as your mentor is going to be a non-negotiable. I'm going to insist that this is absolutely necessary. You're going to need somebody who can pray for you. You're going to need somebody who truly loves you. You're going to need somebody who can give you real critique from a technical perspective. Like we all have a grandmother who will tell us that our sermons are the best, that we're the next Billy Graham. You know, we all probably have people in the pews that really just kind of like us as people. And so they wouldn't ever say a, a critiquing word about our sermons or our characteristics or our attributes or our study habits uh, or our professionalism. But a real good mentor will do that for you. They will give you actual feedback on your sermons, including how you could do it better. Uh, they will be free to give you advice theologically. Think of the story of Apollos in the New Testament, how Priscilla and Aquila came alongside him and explained to him the way more accurately. He was already a gifted guy. But Priscilla and Aquila helped him out theologically. Uh, they had experience and they had understanding. And so um, if you're going to self-educate or homeschool seminary, there's no avoiding this one. You have to have a real mentor that you can meet with regularly. And it can't be somebody on the interwebs out there that you don't actually know. Uh, the next thing I'll say is that um, you're going to have to supplement your, what we would call the lectures. The lectures, you know, we all take classes and there's homework and there's projects and there's essays that you have to write but a lot of it's listening to lectures so where are you going to find people that can provide adequate teaching methodology there's a didactic aspect to going to seminary and you're going to have to supplement that in some way now thankfully we live in practically the best era in human history when it comes uh, to listening to good lectures there's everything on the internet from podcasts to free classes uh, there's great shows, even like Reformed Forum. That's a great podcast you should subscribe to. Talks all kinds of very heavy uh, theological concepts, ideas, persons from history, etc. Um, now, one benefit today is that so many seminaries, real actual accredited seminaries, will put 
a ton of content out there for free on the internet. So you can actually take classes without taking classes, if you know what I mean. Uh, my alma mater, Reformed Theological Seminary in Orlando, there's some other campuses in Jackson, Mississippi, and elsewhere. They have a bunch of classes that you can audit online completely for free. Uh, you can listen to entire classes with notes on Apple iTunes, for instance, or on their YouTube channels. Uh, you can watch hours and hours and hours of content. And so one thing that might be smart is to check out some credible schools like RTS, uh, again, Reformed Theological Seminary, Knox Theological Seminary. Practically all of them do it these days. Really, they're trying to lure you in to take some more classes, but they give away several classes for free. So I would consume just about every one of those free classes that I could that I could get my hands on. Um, and you don't necessarily have to do the work, although you probably should do the work, at least take the notes and, and maybe even do some of the projects. Uh, but I would go to all the seminaries' YouTube pages and begin to subscribe down through all of those channels because a lot of them are giving away free content. Now, as you're listening to other people teach and preach and give lectures, it's also good to listen to yourself. And so if your church or your Bible study has the ability to record your own messages, you're going to want to be able to listen to yourself from time to time, too, so you can hear just how dreadfully awful <laughs> you, actually, you actually are when you first start preaching. And trust me, if you listen to yourself a few times, you'll get the idea that you have a few areas that, uh, that need to be improved. Let's just say it that way. Uh, next, I would say you need to study theology. And that seems obvious, right? And, and you're going to say, well, you already told me to read my Bible five times a year. What more do you want from me? Well, you see, the people that went before us in church history are smarter than us in a lot of ways. Okay, You know more than St. Augustine about the internet, and you know more than Athanasius about, uh, I don't know, Google Docs, because you're smart that way, and podcasts. But they know more than you in a lot of things as well. And so one of the areas that I would particularly recommend that you study, in fact, this is going to be another non-negotiable for me, is that you would study the creeds from history and the confessions of faith, okay? That's gonna keep you on the safe ground of the straight way theologically. The, the biggest danger of homeschooling yourself in terms of your education is that you're gonna wander off and you're not even gonna know that you wandered off because you don't have the context of the landmarks and throughout theological and church history to even identify the fact that you are way, way out in the wilderness. And so this is why we need the creeds and the confessions, because they provide the landmarks for us so that we stay on the right path. So I would seriously suggest studying things like the Apostles' Creed, the Nicene Creed, the Athanasian Creed. I would be, con I would be committing these things to memory. And I would pick one or two of the historic confessions of faith to serve as my guide. Even if I'm non-denominational, even if my church background doesn't have a creed or a confession officially as part of our doctrine, it would be very good for you to at least pick one that's close enough to you so that you understand the basic rubrics of orthodoxy. And so let me just throw out for you, if, uh, if you happen to be of the Reformed persuasion, you should be studying big time the Westminster Confession of Faith. If you're a Baptist, you should be studying in depth the Confession of 1689. If you are Lutheran, you should be working heavily through the Augsburg Confession. If you're of the Church of England or the Anglican faith, the 39 Articles, and if you're none of those, pick the one that you think is closest to you and really, really, really work through that so you don't become a heretic by accident or by design. Now, a lot of people bring up the historical anomaly of Charles Spurgeon, who was considered the, pre the prince of preachers. And he himself, if you've read a biography on him, was not seminary educated. And so a lot of people look to Spurgeon and they say, aha, see Spurgeon didn't go to seminary and he's one of the greatest preachers of all time. And that's true. He is one of the great preachers of all time. But don't forget that Spurgeon didn't play with toys when he grew up as a child. Instead, he played in his grandfather's library of the Puritan works, okay? Spurgeon was reading the Puritans for his amusement and delight since he was a child. And so you can't say Spurgeon wasn't educated because he had been reading much, much harder works than probably you and I have since the time he was 
very young. So Spurgeon did get his confessional education by means of the Puritans, who are, arguably speaking, some of the most educated ministers of all time. The next thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to begin to build a library of your own. Uh, and we do that in seminaries. We're buying the books for our classes. That's one of the benefits is we're inadvertently building our own library that we're going to use for years as we take these classes and, and read the books that are assigned to us. But you're going to have to do this on your own, and that's going to be a challenge for you financially and otherwise. But thankfully, again, we live in a day where so many resources are available to you for free that you don't need quite as many books as uh, have been necessary in prior times. So I would begin building my library, both in digital and, where possible, in print. And these are the kinds of works that I would be looking for. 100% no to all of the bestsellers of today, whatever, <laughs> not 100%. 95% um, no to the best sellers of today. You're not going to need that stuff. Um, what you are going to need is a substantive library of real research, theological, and reference works. So you're going to want to start off with theology. You're going to need to get some systematic theology in your bloodstream. You're going to need some commentaries of books of the Bible, and commentaries of individual books of the Bible, and then commentaries of the Bible as a whole. You're going to need to get yourself reading through a ton of church history so you understand the warp and the woof of how the church has, has grown and been challenged and failed and succeeded at times throughout history. You're going to need to read a little bit of philosophy just so you can learn to think as a, as a good, rational person. I'm not saying you need to overindulge in the secular works of the, of the pagan writers, but no, they offer uh, something that is helpful to us, especially when it comes to reason and clear thinking, Aristotelian logic. Some of these things are pretty helpful just to be a good thinker. You're going to need some practical works, uh, some uh, books in the field of what we call practical theology, how to lead your church as a pastor. And then you're going to need um, quite a few books that are going to serve as your reference books. Now, I did make a video a while back called The Super Basic Library, a Starter Kit for Teachers, Elders, Chaplains, and Bivocational Pastors. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to link that video right here in this video so you can click over there. Th these would be, as I remember, four or five books that I think would be super helpful, very important, um, just to have your basic background covered. So when you come to a term in the Bible that you're not familiar with, uh, maybe it's Nebuchadnezzar or, I don't know, Herod's Temple or something, you can look up some reference works on, on those subjects. And those will be the kind of works that you tap into your entire life. So can it be done? I think it can. Uh, should it be done? That's a question for another video. But assuming that you're out there and you have no other recourse but to educate yourself, then more power to you. Uh, I truly do hope for the best for those of you who are in those circumstances. Um, I've been blessed in a number of ways in my life. One of those ways I've been blessed is through great professors, uh, formal education, and churches that helped me to get through it, uh, helped me to pay for it and get to where I am today. But I do realize that not everybody goes the same path in the same course. And there might be any number of circumstances that would require you to challenge yourself to get educated. And perhaps you can be like Tyler Jackson, my, my homeboy and friend who's doing a great job of that uh, in another state. So thanks for checking into this video. I do hope that you uh, appreciated some of the things that I said. And uh, maybe go check out some of the resources I, that I will post in the description to this video below. Hey, I love you lots. Thanks for checking in and we'll talk to you later.